Hello, you, hello YouTube. Um, just a helpful uh, service tip here. Um, if you've done some work inside of your um, valve cover or you have replaced the eccentric shaft or the eccentric shaft motor, that's a little worm gear that rests on like a half moon gear. Um, you have to retrain the, uh, the the computer ECU inside the car. So we have a BMW X1 28i X Drive 2.0 twin turbo E84 chassis N20 motor. And um, if you um, need to uh, do this setting um, and do these steps. Um, to train the computer for the position of the eccentric shaft. So if you have moved it manually with the little uh, with the little Allen key and you didn't put it back in the same position as where it originally was, what's going to happen is, is uh, the eccentric shaft is actually on your intake side. Um, and what's going to happen is, is that your uh, car is going to run too rich because it doesn't have enough airflow coming in on the intake side and there's too much fuel inside the engine. So the mixture is off because the eccentric shaft is actually getting in the way of the intake valves because it kind of rides on those loads. So to reprogram this, you could take your valve cover off and you can use the Allen wrench to turn it to the all the way open position, um, which means that it would be in the fully open position, but I don't want to take my valve cover off again. Um, that it's set up on there. A lot of times the gaskets leak uh, for the head gasket. So if you do pull it off, replace the, the gaskets on your uh, valve cover because they're prone to leak. So we're gonna use ISTA to hook up to the car to do this learn process. And it takes about 20 minutes to cycle through 450 cycles. So it relearns the stop limits on your eccentric shaft because it can only rotate to a certain spot and then it's stopped off by a bolt and then it rotates to the next spot. So if that's not set right, your intake of air is going to be uh, incorrect, which is going to allow the car to run rich on fuel because it's not getting enough air. Also, when you're driving, it might shake uh, because the engine is, is trying to struggle and the transmission isn't operating correctly because you might have a check engine light on of uh, running too rich or other specific errors to the centric shaft. So I know I need to do mine because when I reinstalled it, I didn't put it back into the factory position. All right, so now using the ISTA software that you download, um, online um, once you have that installed in, on your laptop you're going to need this specific cord it's a k plus decan cord usb interface on the other end amazon has them for about thirty dollars um, there are some settings that you need to adjust since um, you need to tell the ista software um, that you're using a specific com port and that all communicates to each other so there's uh, pdf instructions available online that shows you how to edit the different files so you can adjust what com port it's actually trying to find or also have connection issues and the, the computer won't um, the ecu computer in the car won't talk to the laptop so once you're ready you can connect this um, underneath to your us uh your obd2 port under the car and once you do that you just put your key in the slot and just press the ignition key once. So your instrument cluster shows up, but you're not starting the vehicle. And now we're gonna go over to the laptop and we're gonna make the connection over here. At this point, tell me in the comments if this has helped so far. Once the software is open, USB is connected. I'm gonna go over to operations, read out data. I'm gonna double click this top here and I'm gonna click complete identification. If this search goes away really quick and can't connect, then that means that your COM ports aren't set correctly in your edible uh, coding files. So right now it's it's finding the vehicle. I like doing it this way instead of entering the VIN. That way I know the connection is secure to the vehicle. So it takes a couple minutes to go through these things. It's going to give you the tree readout of uh, codes, the uh, fault codes that the car has where you can reset things. Um, also inside ISTA it gives you all the service um, replacement procedures if you're doing anything 
um, that you want to replace or do. All the instructions are found inside of the, the workshop operation um, areas in here. So they'll give you procedures, torque specs, everything that you uh, would need to change out anything from a starter to a battery to an exhaust um, to the turbocharger. Um, Okay, so once you have your uh, your connection established, you should see a tree here, which indicates some faults. Uh, green is good. Um, none of these faults uh, show up as uh, resetting the eccentric, but I know since I was inside of there that I didn't reinstall it in the same way that it came out. So uh, it needs to cycle through the process. So it needs to uh, go through the setting um, inside of here. Um, In your vehicle management and you want to go to service function and then inside of here this is uh, we're trying to locate the Valtronic learn limits so we're gonna go inside the powertrain we're gonna go inside um, engine electronics and then inside of here we're gonna go to adjustment functions and this is also something you might, might want to do as well um, when you're in here. Um, you, this is a spot where if you replace your injectors, you can code those to the new ones that come. Um, you could also, smart to delete adaptions. Some people do this through their Beamers code app, um, which I'll have another video for that soon. But in here, uh, it'll be in the description um, of this. A video here so you can see that um, which is a little bit quicker you can do through your phone using the Beamers code app um, but you can also do it through ISTA here so what you can do is you can delete adaptions you can delete uh, adaption variable camshaft timing control um, this does you can do this without running the vehicle um, so say you're pulling a trailer say that you bought the car from somebody else that you know drove erratically or the car adjusts to your driving style and likes, and it kind of learns your patterns of how you drive. So it can adjust everything for maximum performance. So, you know, if you got this from somebody who has been towing something, the gears will obviously shift differently than um, if it hasn't been towed with. So if you have a trailer hitch back there, you know, something was pulling it. Um, so I, I would reset these adaptions here as well. So that way the computer can start relearning your patterns. So for the Valtronic one, um, what we want to do is go into learning Valtronic limit positions and then we're going to double click the adaptions and then what's going to happen is it's going to um, tell you to, a procedure each time repair work has been done on the Valtronic system um, it needs to relearn the limit positions and adjusting mechanisms um, to allow maximum lift so if you were to manually do this you would have to take the valve cover off and you would have to put the uh, eccentric shaft in the maximum lift position, which means that the valves on the intake side would be fully open because this eccentric shaft rides on the intake lobes of the car. So you just work through the process here of continue to go through this and it tells you to switch off terminal 15. Terminal 15 means the um, push button ignition on and then terminal R is the key out and uh, it would go through this step. So that would take uh, some time to do, and then the, you will actually be able to see about a 20 minute phase of going through 450 cycles of the vehicle um, learning its new process, which takes about 15, 20 minutes. All right, so once you just learn the new limit positions, basically what you'll hear is the eccentric shaft rotate and it hits one position. Um, at its top and then at the bottom so you can kind of hear it clicking inside the hood have your hood open so you can kind of hear that it's been done and it'll show complete and you'll be complete with that process step so to actually do the running phase this is when the vehicle they ask you to turn the vehicle on and it runs through the 450 phases if all of those phases are successful it does then 50 test runs of air free and once that's done then it allows you to completely finish the process and the eccentric shaft is in the correct position electronically inside. So again, if you replace your eccentric shaft motor with a little worm gear on it, 
or you've manually turned the eccentric shaft, you need to go through this process. Um, so you, what you do is click running in phase and then AVL, Valvetronic Startup in ISTA. And it says if the Valvetronic server motor was changed, teaching in, uh, in errors are present, adjustment problems persist, control deviation errors present for the microscopic smoothing of the eccentric shaft. Because the eccentric shaft basically controls the throttle. There is no, there's no throttle that is controlled by this car through a cable on your, on your gas pedal. So it's actually all done through the eccentric shaft, which leads to better performance. So it says it takes about 20 minutes. You just hit continue and go through the next steps. And it'll ask, uh, it'll tell you um, at the end to turn on your vehicle. And it'll start counting up to the 450 cycle. So it'll say cycle one, cycle two, cycle three. And it takes about 15 to 20 minutes. And then it goes through 50 air cycles or air free cycles. And then you're 100% done. The car will run rough at idle. You need to keep the car in idle. It'll run rough because it's making its adjustments. So um, once you're done with the process, then you can start it up and the idle should be all set, done, complete, and 100% good. So that's it. Sorry for this clip. We forgot to.